Hi folks, Vince here with the Tinkerer's Workshop. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about scratch stocks and what you can do with them. This, this here is a little piece of molding. It's a Grecian OG profile. Uh, and this is a molding that I made with this tool here, which is known as a scratch stock. And if you're not familiar with scratch stocks, they're very simple but effective tools for creating custom molding profiles in short runs. And the nice thing about scratch stocks is that you can make them in your own shop. So you can, if you have a piece of furniture with some damaged molding and you need to recreate the molding and you can't find a router bit to match or a molding plane to match, you can make a custom cutter that's the profile of the molding you want and create your own tool for cutting those moldings. Um, very simple to make and I thought I'd just kind of walk you through how I like to make these and how I go about using them. One of the great things about scratch stocks is that you don't really need a lot of materials to make them. Um, all you really need for the body are a couple of scraps of wood, a few screws to hold the pieces of wood together, and then you need some kind of metal to make the cutter, and even that you can use usually recycle stuff you have in the shop already. You can use uh, old bandsaw blades, um, hacksaw blades, if you have any uh, old recip saw blades, like a sawzall blade, those those work well. Card scrapers, or what I like to use are just old uh, hand saw hand saws. Uh, you can usually find these at garage sales and things for a couple of bucks, especially if the handle's broken and the steel in them is really ideal for uh, scratch stock. So I'm going to cut a little piece out of this, and uh, we'll we'll start making the cutter first. That saw plate was pretty tough. I started started cutting it with a hacksaw and it was just taking way too long so I switched over to a, a uh, Dremel tool with a rotary a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel and that zipped through it fairly quickly. Then uh, I took the piece that I cut out and ground the edges on the bench grinder to kind of square it up there. Now to lay out the profile what I've done here on this side I uh, painted it with a little layout fluid, machinist layout fluid let that dry and then I can go ahead and just etch in the profile I want to I want to use just for the sake of this video I'm going to use a, a cutter from a Stanley 55 plane it's got a profile on there that I thought would be good to use so what I did was just set that there and then took a uh, little scriber and traced around the profile now if if you obviously if you're doing this to match a molding you already have you can draw out the molding and draw it onto your steel or just draw it onto a piece of paper and glue it in place and that kind of gives you a guide. So now that I've got this traced out, um, I don't know if you can actually see where I traced it but it's a real fine line there. What I'll do is go in with a uh, grinder and files and clean out the waste. I'll use the bench grinder probably just to take out most of this and then I use the Dremel tool a little bit to hog out a little more and then probably a couple of small needle files, round files, to get these little coves right there. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that.
Okay, so there's the profile. Pretty much uh, ground to shape there. Just worked it back and forth with uh, Dremel tool and files and got it to where I want. Um, finally, it kind of creates a burr on each each face of the cutter blade. So what I'm going to do now is just take it out of the vise and I'll I'll uh, smooth it out on a on a bench stone, oil stone. So we'll just put a little oil on a Washita stone here and just kind of rub this back and forth. The idea is just to kind of take that burr off. Go back and forth. It doesn't take much here. And I flip it over, do the other side as well. Just work it back and forth, one side to the other. You want to get it uh, smooth, take off any pitting or rust that's there. So that's looking pretty good. I'll probably hit it on the hard Arkansas stone just to polish it up a bit. but. It's getting where we want it. Just going to rub this a little bit on the hard Arkansas stone just to polish up that edge a bit. Doesn't take much here, just a few strokes back and forth on each side. That's looking pretty good. And we'll do the other side. And that looks good there too. Okay, we've got the cutter made, now we're ready to move on to the stock. Well, before we go on to the stock, I thought I'd just show you a real quick comparison. Here's the cutter that I made, and here's the, the uh, Stanley 55 blade. So you can see it's pretty pretty good match there with the profile. Uh, not perfect, but pretty close. So I'm happy with that. Okay, now we're on to the stock. All right, so to make the uh, holder for the blade, that's we'll call it the stock or the body, there's not really much to it. You can you can do it a couple of ways. You can start with a solid piece of wood, just a large block of wood, and uh, cut a kerf almost through the down the center, almost all the way through the block, and that gives you a place to put the blade and lock it in place. Or you can just start with two pieces of wood and do it that way. Um, what we're going to do is tape these two blocks together so that they're matched up and then we'll come in and cut out a chunk here to make an L shape and that will uh, this provides you a fence to ride against the workpiece and the blade will kind of sit down here in between the two blocks and that allows you to hold the blade in place We'll use a couple of screws here and one here that'll pinch the blade in between the two blocks and allow you just to kind of run it over your workpiece. So I'm going to tape these together with some uh, double-sided tape and then we'll uh, head over to the bandsaw to make that cut. Okay, so we've got the notch cut out here, and I've laid out some screw locations, hole locations. Uh, again, nothing fancy, just kind of eyeballed where this should go. And I've got a countersink bit here with the pilot bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill those holes now.
Okay, there's just one last detail here I want to show you. I've come in with a chisel and just undercut, beveled the two edges of this, at the underside of the long part of the L. And what this does, this kind of rounded shape, it allows you to, to rock the scratch stock forward or backward so that you can get the best angle as you're cutting. Uh, you'll see that better when I actually start using it, but this is kind of the final step just to go in and do a slight little undercut. You can sand it, you can use a chisel, uh, you can round it if you want, or I just made two straight little bevels. So that's to uh, allow you to get the right angle when you're cutting your profile. Alright, now that we have our scratch stock in hand and ready to go, uh, we're ready to start cutting some moldings. And uh, to begin with, uh, when you select the wood that you're making your moldings from, if, if possible, you want to pick a very tame, uh, even straight grained wood. Walnut's great. This is a piece of mahogany that works well. Um, some nice clear white pine will work. Uh, yellow pine is maybe a little bit more stringy and doesn't cut quite as cleanly. But if at all possible, get something that has very even grain, nothing real wild. Um, this piece of mahogany is pretty clean, so that should, that, I hope that will work well. So I've, I've drawn the profile of the molding on the end of the board here. And if you can see this area right here, this is quite a bit of waste. And I don't really want to have to remove all of that with the scratch stock. So I'm going to go in with a rabbit plane. Uh, you could use a table saw too and a dado blade, but I'm just going to use a rabbit plane and kind of cut out as much of this chunk of waste as I can first, and that way there'll be less wear and tear on the scratch stock when I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this up in the vise and get to work on it. Okay, so now that I've got a rabbit cut along the edge here to remove most of the waste, I'm going to go ahead and start using the scratch stock. And uh, the key is you want to hold this part, the fence, against the face of the board and just kind of run it, run it back and forth. Uh, you've got to make sure and take light passes at first, and then as it starts to cut deeper, uh, it'll start tracking itself as you work a groove in there. It'll start following its own groove. See that small bee right there is starting to, to uh, come out. I'll just keep going back and forth. One thing, you got to be careful on the ends. When you go off the end, it's easy to chip or to fall off. So I typically will like, like to uh, cut my stock a little bit longer than I need and just cut the profile in the middle and then lop the ends off when I'm done. That way I don't have to worry about going all the way to the ends.
can see we've got pretty much full depth here, right in the center. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning this up all the way to the ends as best I can. I'll do that off camera and then come back to show you the finished product. Okay, I've, I've pretty much got this profile, uh, the full depth on almost the entire length here. A little bit of chipping at the ends here, but like I said before, I'll trim those off. Um, just kind of make a couple final passes over it to smooth everything out. And I think this is good to take over to the saw and trim off. All right, here's the finished product. I I uh, ripped it from the edge of the board and cut the trimmed the ends off to get rid of that kind of nasty bit at the ends, but came out actually looking pretty nice. It's a Grecian OG profile. Um, this is the kind of thing you would use maybe at the top of a cabinet or case, or you can turn it over and use it this way at the bottom of the case. So uh, nice little molding. It's the kind of thing, like I said. You know, you could probably find a router bit to cut this, but if you just need to make a small run of it, uh, you can save yourself a little bit of money, and uh, it's kind of fun to do, too. So, scratch stock. Um, next time you have some molding you want to make, give it a try. Thanks for watching.